Let me bring in the chair of the Republican National Committee, Reince Priebus. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Chris. Uh, the administration points out that early enrollment in Romney Care got a slow start in Massachusetts as well. What, 123 people signed up the first month, for example? Do we need to just give this thing a chance? Well, I mean, it's certainly, I think everyone agrees that the rollout's been a disaster. The waste of money put into this website is a mess, and, and clearly people are frustrated and they can't sign up well, for something. Well, I don't know that it's a waste uh, of money. They are fixing for three it. Years. And, and, okay, so I, I guess I would concede that eventually I would imagine this website is going to get fixed. So, I mean, I, I get that part. I think the bigger issues that we're going to face are, number one, the fact that, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are certainly being canceled by their insurance companies when they were promised by the well, president well, let's that start that with wouldn't that. happen. I, I want to start with issue. that because I think we so. need to be fair about that. The people who are getting these notices first of all they have to be offered another plan and the reason that they're getting these notices is because they don't have hospitalization they don't have maternity care they have sky-high deductibles these are for people whose plans as david firestone put it in the new york times op-ed don't work republicans were apparently furious that government would dare to intrude on an insurance company's freedom to offer a terrible product to desperate people um, well, f first of all, I think it's pretty clear that the president said repeatedly that if you like your insurance plan, you're going to be able to keep it. Now, Firestone and New York Times put aside, the fact is that's what people were told, and I think that was part of the reason why some of the vitriol against the plan may have been tempered. But when the president pr made that promise, I think it's reasonable for people to expect for them to keep, be able to keep their plan. But that's not what might be the worst thing that's going to happen that that stuff's coming and what's going to happen next is that people are going to sign up for the exchanges and they're going to find out that they're going to pay even more money than what they were just dropped for and they might even get a worse plan for what they were dropped for and then the next thing that's going to happen is that young people and healthy people are not going to sign up in the exchanges number one they can't currently but if they tried to um, and if they got on uh, obviously, they wouldn't be able to sign up, and then the the overall well, well, prices. I, I, I don't would want to go to too many. Cause cause the most young... uh, let me let me tell you what the White House would say to that. Number one, a lot of people are going to get tax. Saying, I know what a lot of people would get tax true. subsidies. But but you're making your your reasoning is speculative. There are tax subsidies for a lot of the people whose prices may initially come out high. There are tax subsidies available, and let me play for you what Jay Carney said this morning. To your point about young people and whether or not they'll sign up. There's a silver lining here when it comes to young people, and young people are important to this working. Uh, it was always the case, no matter how good the website was going to be, that, that young Americans were going to be the last group to sign up. I mean, I don't know about you in college, or I mean, everything I did when I was young was last minute. Well, I'm with Jake Carney on that one to the extent that <laughs> well, I was a procrastinator and never wrote my paper till the last minute. Does he have a point, though, Ryan? Seriously, we don't know right now. The accusations that you're making are speculative. Well, here's what we know, Chris, and, and I think we can, we can find common ground here. We know that we were promised that this website would be working great, and it's not, and it is a total mess. And the White House we would know concede that. that the president promised, okay, okay, fine, they keep saying and they keep saying. We know that, that the president promised that people would be able to keep their health insurance if they liked their plan, and that's not happening. We know the president promised that you'd be able to keep your doctor. 40% of the doctors are now saying that they're not going to take part in these exchanges. So I, I, I get it. You know, Jay Carney's talking, the president's talking. It's a lot of talk, but what people are seeing and the reason why they're losing in this narrative, and clearly you have to concede that they are losing in this narrative, is because the truth and the reality is is that people are feeling a lot of pain and the law is not being carried out the way that they were promised and, uh, and, well, and it's showing this. across I, the I country. I don't know how you know to measure who's winning or losing the narrative except by the polls and our new NBC News Wall Street pr Journal poll finds that feelings toward Republicans have hit another all-time low. 22% right. positive, 53% negative. I, I, I hear you Chris, I mean, but 
all of that aside, you, we, we can't escape the fact that this law's rollout is a disaster. People are being canceled of their insurance policies when they were promised they wouldn't. I think the next thing is going to happen, the premiums are going to skyrocket because young people aren't going to sign up. And ultimately what you're seeing, Chris, is that Democrat senators that are running for re-election want to delay because they don't actually want to face the people that are being affected by the law because they actually want to win their election. That should tell you everything you need to know about what's going on here and how people are perceiving it. The president's numbers are in the tank. And clearly, I'll give you, people are sick and tired of Washington. It goes for Republicans, Democrats, the president. His approval and, rating and is about Obamacare double that of the Republican is a, Party. is a classic example of what people are tired of. They're tired of politicians like the president making promises that they can't keep. Let me just ask you about a headline in Politico this morning. It reads, the Obamacare sabotage campaign. It argues that some of the problems with healthcare.gov have to do with the roadblocks put in place by Republicans. For example, most Republican governors declined to create their own insurance exchange. And in fact, um, 36 exchanges, far more than intended. The Tea Party Patriots website, Reince, suggested that since Washington was not equipped to handle so many exchanges, quote, both financially and otherwise, this means the entire law could implode on itself. Is there a little bit of disingenuousness to hammer the Obama administration for problems that they clearly wanted to happen and wanted to contribute to? Well, I don't think the website not being able to sign up six people uh, is a problem with uh, Republicans not liking Obamacare. I mean, the well, fact it is, is with 36 we spent millions, and we spent millions of dollars, up their own tens exchanges. of millions of dollars on a website, Chris, that doesn't work. That has nothing to do with the Tea Party patriots. It has to do with incompetency at HHS and a president who is totally aloof, doesn't know what's going on, and finds out his news at the same time you and I do. That's the problem. Reading speeches written by somebody else, making promises to the American people that they buy into, and then f only to find out that all of those promises aren't true, that's not on the Tea Party patriots. That's on the President of the United States. Reince Priebus, always good to see you. Thank you. Thanks.